Joining us right now to talk about the hack, its response, and all things that crypto is Jump Trading Group President and Chief Investment Officer Dave Olson. Dave, it's good to see you. Help the audience understand what happened in this instance, and then maybe we can walk through the implications of it. Sure. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So Wormhole is a cross-chain bridge that allows layer one blockchains to communicate with one another. And a very sophisticated, well-resourced attacker found a vulnerability in this bridge, was able to exploit it, and effectively forge the check that vouches for the fact that Ether is backing new contracts on other chains. Uh, they were able to do so on about 120,000 ETH uh, and then drain those from the system. So, Dave, just for, for our audience, and, and there, there's going to be some who are super sophisticated experts in this, some who are, who, who are not uh, going to understand it. Right now, things run on chains, for lack of a better phrase. And um, you could argue that Ethereum is its own chain. Um, uh, Solana is its own chain. What you're doing is creating a bridge between those. Uh, one of the, the thoughts about blockchain is that it's a trusted environment, and it's trusted because everything exists on one chain. You've tried to develop, a, or they've, you know, Wormhole's effectively developed a product to connect these chains, and it's raised questions about whether, whether that could ever actually work in practice, because clearly you're taking something off the chain. That's right. Yeah, the chains are a ledger that have a immutable record of all the transactions that have happened on that chain from the beginning. Um, that is sound. Uh, the wormhole extension from that uh, is a additional bit of code that creates the ability to pass from one chain to another. Uh, that has been developed by some of the block best blockchain engineers in the world and audited by several of the biggest blockchain engineering uh, auditing companies. Uh, but in this case, there was a bug and it did allow the exploit to occur. Uh, I think this is a growing pain on the path to a uh, very hardened code base, uh, which takes time. I think the decade we've seen some of the home layer one blockchains out there have hardened over time and we expect that to be the case here too. When you say hardened, that suggests that the software gets better. But my understanding is that the underlying code for Ethereum, for example, and the underlying code for Bitcoin has not changed since the very beginning. There have been minor updates, uh, but that's right. I think that the process of being open source uh, and having an entire global community looking at vulnerabilities, uh, proposing changes to the code base, uh, and having a governance model around that, we've seen with uh, Ethereum and other uh, layer one blockchains occur very effectively. So $320 million uh, basically just like disappears, mm -hmm. goes to money heaven or goes to some robbers or now robber barons, depending on what you think of these folks. And, and the question is, in this environment, you guys are stepping up and, and effectively replacing that money for, for customers. But... In most, in, in most environments, that doesn't have to happen. It's not like a bank. It's not like an insured system, typically, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, and the, uh, the money has not totally vanished. It, it, the Ether is still visible in a lot of the wallets that they've moved it into. We're working very aggressively with the FBI and private investigative teams. Uh, and we may not recover the funds tomorrow or next month. Uh, the, but the pursuit is going to be a very long one and government and private agencies are going after these. We're very height, uh, heartened by the fact that the Bitfinex attackers are being brought to justice and those funds are being recovered. So we hope we follow the same path here.